All right, guys, so we found another booth at CES, and in particular, we're in the Venetian, so there are tons of smaller booths with a lot of companies here, and a lot of times there are just founders that bring out their product to showcase it. And we found an interesting one today here. This is S Drive, and I have Mikkel, who is the founder of this company, but this is an Axial Flux design. It's a little bit different than what you would expect from what we've reported on in previous shows. I'm hoping you can give us a little bit more information about this and explain to people why this is so different. Yeah, certainly. Uh, so, so this is basically the full drivetrain, including the brakes, and it repl replaces the traditional EV drivetrain. Basically, everything what uh, what uh, what you need. Uh, so it doesn't have differential. It doesn't have a gearbox. It's basically direct direct drive and uses axial flux technology. So it's is a really high torque uh, motor and it's super light. Uh, the weight of the system it's uh, including the motor and wheel and tire and and brakes as well. Is the same weight as the car wheel without the motor it's on on normal generic car. So really, with, with this system, uh, there is no uh, problem of unsprung mass, unlike uh, other in hub motors. Mm -hmm. uh, so we believe we have a product that is truly revolutionary and will change the electric vehicles uh, of the future. So it's kind of interesting because with this design, it's all built in here. You have the braking system and the caliper here, and then you have these hex bolts. And you were explaining to me a little bit that the damping from the motor uh, spinning is transferred through those dampers, right? So can you kind of give an overview of that? Yeah, certainly. So this is 19 inch wheel. Uh, it's it's designed for a race car. So there is no enough, uh, uh, there, is, there is no much room for dumping, but uh, for, for production vehicles, we will have slightly more uh, space. Uh, uh, so so those, those black uh, ring represents the uh, the damping elements, which uh, gives a little bit of uh, uh, damping, so we don't put vibration on the motors. Uh, so this way, we uh, we reduce the stress on the bearings to improve the durability for production vehicles uh, and in increase the lifespan of the product. Um, obviously, um, the braking system and everything is super light uh, because we designed these brakes uh, only for safety because. Uh, the motor itself has uh, enough torque uh, to stop the vehicle, so it, it has the same torquing uh, torque as the as the braking system. Uh, so brakes are really just for safety. And so that regenerative braking power, how much would you say is? going to be able to come back depending on obviously how they configure it yeah so it depends on the state of the charge of the battery if battery is 100 percent then we can't really regenerate because you know there is no space in the battery but obviously this will be uh, adjusted by the software so uh, the, the the motors can generate up to 600 newton meters of torque uh, so pretty much all the energy even from the racetrack can come back to battery if the battery can take the charge. Yeah. So it depends on the on the electronics and the battery, you know, how much charge and discharge it can it can uh, absorb. So the motors can basically deliver everything. All the energy can come back. That's amazing. Now, I want to move around to the back because you were telling me, and you've mentioned race car several times, so this is designed really per for performance. But can you kind of describe exactly what's going on here with these areas that it connects up to the motor? What is that specifically enabling? Yeah, certainly. So let's just start with the stator and, and rotor because obviously every electric motor have two main components. So stator is the... Uh, the part in the center where all the parts are attached and rotor is basically this part in here and as you can see here this gap in here this is a split between the rotor and stator so all this will rotate uh, so th because this is axial flux technology so the mat uh, magnets are on the side mm -hmm. they are not on the perimeter of the of the motor so uh, we have direct uh, attachment of the brake caliper directly on the stator so as you can see there is no upright we eliminated all the components, it's very simple. Uh, this is a mount for the lower wishbone suspension. So there is a ball joint. So this also act as a steering axis. So a lower wishbone comes in here. This is our uh, steering axis and upper wishbone comes here on the top. Uh, and then obviously uh, the tie rod for the steering comes on this uh, bracket over here. Uh, and uh, it has everything what it needs. This is uh, those components. Uh, this is inlet and outlet for the oil cooling because we have direct cooling of the stator. 
However, for for production vehicle that doesn't require much power, we can remove uh, oil cooling and have only air cooling because there is a lot of air flowing through the through the motor. And if we run it in 20% of the power capacity, then we don't need uh, liquid cool because we can we can have a blades on the on the rotor and it will suck enough air. Uh, to cool the motor without requirement for the pump, liquid cooling and so on. So it simplifies the system even further. However, at this stage uh, of the time, and because you know this is high performance motor, we still require oil cooling or liquid cooling for, uh, for this particular model. And this also enables then the ability to uh, integrate like a rear steering system or the adjustability for each wheel independently to move, right? Yeah, certainly. So it's it's basically this can be also this this particular motor can be also implemented on left and right wheel. So the brake caliper can be simply reversed for left and right side. So it's basically for for low cost mass manufacturing design and also for the front and rear wheels. And in addition we can have uh, rear wheels and front wheels that rotates almost 90 degrees because we don't have drive shafts, we don't have a universal joint. So this can turn almost 90 degrees. So car can move si sideways, forwards, backwards, any direction you want. Like you said, great for the track. Yes. <laughs> great for the track, great for the parking. Uh, and obviously uh, it's, it's something that it, it opens up new design possibilities. And obviously since we don't use uh, uh, mechanical differential, then we can add torque vectoring, you know, and with different modes, vehicle, this will change, you know, for the track or for the road, you know, and it, it can, it, it just opens up a lot of possibilities because every wheel has its own drive uh, and steering. Now, can you give me a little bit more detail on the advantages with the power and efficiency? So this particular model is uh, designed for, for race cars. So it has 200 kilowatt of power, about 600 Newton meters of torque, but power can be adjusted according to the use case. Uh, but efficiency is much higher than traditional system. It's just because we have uh, uh, we don't have differential, we don't have gearbox, we don't have drive shafts, and every element have a little bit less efficiency because it's, there is a loss in, um, in, uh, in efficiency. So our system is, is more efficient than uh, traditional drivetrains. Uh, and in terms of the power to weight ratio, because this is like the most important, or power density, in other words, uh, it's 300% uh, improved in comparison to traditional systems. So the main idea about this is it's hubless electric drivetrain. And the reason why we done hubless, not hub, is because most of the load or torque, it's, uh, it, when we distribute it around the larger diameter, it's, it's much more efficient and we can, you know, we can reduce the weight. If you have, if you have uh, the hub, the, the most of the torque goes through the hub. So that's why, uh, that's why uh, other competitors or other car companies can't have the same weight, you know, power to weight, because they have so much weight requirement in, in the center of the hub. So, so our patent, we have 25 claims on this system. So it, it includes the, the way the system is attached, the all interfaces, uh, the dumping elements and the new braking system and so on. And we, we didn't reinvent the wheel, although it looks like <laughs> we did reinvent the wheel, um, but it's using the same materials. Uh, it's, it's the aluminum steel mainly, you know, not, nothing fancy. Uh, we use the same similar principle for electric motors. It's not, we invent the new uh, G motor. So we're very similar what other uh, companies are doing, but we just think that we improve the efficiency, the way it's interfaced and the way we, we manufacture the system because it's designed for mass production. Mm -hmm. It's not designed for one-off or you know racing cars, yeah. but it, the aim of the system is to reduce the cost, weight, and complexity. Yes. This is our aim. Simplicity is always uh, yes. <laughs> yeah, the efficiency the key is the key word. Efficiency, uh, the way we do everything, it's it's all about efficiency. Well, this is so cool. Now, I just want to ask a question about you in particular because obviously you're an engineer and you have a great mind to come up with something like this. So can you just speak really quickly about your background and how you got to this point? Yeah, certainly. So I spent past uh, 12, 14 years working for OEMs. I work for McLaren, Aston Martin, Performance Technologies. I work for Rivian, Zoox, uh, Neo, uh, and other, you know, other startups, uh, developing a concept vehicles for them or concept technologies for uh, those OEMs. And during my time uh, in the career, I had a lot of ideas, a lot of uh, 
a lot of new concepts, but it was it was really difficult to go through the layers of uh, of management because I was as a consultant, I didn't have much uh, much decision making power. Uh, so I decided to open a startup and to implement all these technologies or you know to- things that I thought it would really change the the car industry. So here I am uh, developing uh, some of my own ideas. I love it. Well, that's so cool. Thank you for spending some time with us, and uh, I really hope this takes off. Now, what in, what do you guys need in order to get this into production vehicles? Uh, yeah. So obviously, I bootstrapped the company uh, from you know uh, uh, from uh, from the ground up and get the company to a certain level. So at uh, at the moment, we are in position where we want to put this on the road. We have a we have a concept, we have a, a prototype that uh, we develop, but now we have to prove that it works. So we need to put it on real vehicles, uh, put it on the road, and uh, uh, put it to the test. So you know there are different uh, testing that we have to uh, perform, uh, such as uh, you know durability testing in different environment, in dust, in uh, different temperature. Uh, so, so this is what we. Uh, that's why we are here on CES. We are hoping to find partners who would be interested to join us on the journey, uh, and investors who will be basically interested to uh, to support us and see this as potential for the future of electric vehicles. Well, I'm excited for you. Thank you again Thank for you spending so some time. Yes. Thank you very much for coming over and doing this interview. I really appreciate yes, it. Yes, absolutely. Enjoy the rest of your CES. Thank you so much. <laughs>